There you are. Yeah. What's this? It's a prezi. For me? From me to you. Oh, thanks very much. I'll put it down here under the tree. Hey, hey I'm really pleased with this tree, you know. Haven't you forgotten something? What? The prezi. I said thank you. No, what about mine? Your prezi to me. Oh, I didn't get you one. You didn't? No. Why not? Well, it's an old saying, you see. Very old saying says, it's better to give than to receive. You're giving, I'm receiving, so you're better off than me, see? Oh, I see. How old is this saying, then? Oh, it's very old. Well, it should be scrapped, then. No, it shouldn't. It should. You should exchange presents, cos it's traditional. Ah, well, that's where you're wrong, you see, as you'll find out as this week's show goes along. Traditional Christmas. And no prezi for Barry. No. And welcome to our It's Nearly Christmas show, in which I'm going to take a look back at Christmases over the centuries and try to compare Christmas past with Christmas present. Did I say Christmas present? I knew you'd got me one all the time. No, look. I was just explaining to the viewers all about Christmas past and Christmas present. Oh. I bet you don't even know the difference. Of course I do. Christmas past was long ago mm. and Christmas present is under the tree. No, that's all wrong. I know, there should be two presents under the tree. Look, will you stop going on about your present? Oh. There's more to Christmas than presents. Is there? Yes, yeah, the season of goodwill. I mean, just look at all these Christmas cards. I've never seen so many. I have. When? Last Christmas. I got 52. Who from? My grandad. All in a pack. Hearts, clubs, diamond spades. They're not the same thing. They're playing cards. Well, I got them at Christmas. Oh, forget it. I can't forget a thing like that. It was my grandad. Look, I tell you what, just go and get ready to decorate the tree. We're going to decorate? Yes. Great. I love doing things like that. Now, there's nothing more heartwarming at Christmas than carol singing. Is he? Come here. Oh, right. What's all this lot? For decorating the tree. Not that kind of decorating. You hang things from it. Oh, do you? Didn't you do this when you were a kiddie? No, I come from a very poor family. Oh, you didn't have a tree in the corner then? We didn't even have a corner. Hey? I lived in a lighthouse. Oh, I see. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what to do. Oh, good. Right, first of all, get rid of this lot. This lot? Yeah, and fetch me some bowbells. Doorbells? What, to ring in the new year? No, bowbells. Oh. Yeah, you hang them on the tree. See. Look, there's a box full outside. Go and fetch him. I'll go and get him. Yeah, you go right. and get him. And take those overalls off. Now, let's just see some more carol singing. <coughs> we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <laughs> Good. Oh, one of the traditions of Christmas is the decorated tree. Although the Christmas tree itself has only been around a hundred years or so, hey, it has become... It only came this morning. What did? The tree. You said it had been around a hundred years or so, and it was only delivered this morning. It was delivered by Bruce. Bruce? Bruce the Spruce. I was there. Oh, now, where was I? I don't know where you were, but I was there. Uh, it has become an integral part of the Christmas scene. Hey, Barry. What? Do you know that tree comes from Norway? It's called fir. This tinsel comes from the high street and it's called Tatty. Oh, get on with it. I'm going to sit back and watch Armchair Theatre. I thought you might. It was the crib that had done it. The vicar had asked Miss Grice if her class could make the crib for the church this year. Everyone put their hands up to make Mary. Miss, please, miss, please, miss, me, miss, me. Everyone waved their hands to make Joseph. Please, miss, me, miss, oh, please, miss, me. Everybody waved them like mad at everything. All except Michael. Michael couldn't make anything. Well, not as well as he could break things. But what about you, Michael? What will you make? Said Miss Grice. Don't know, Miss. Said Michael, looking at his big, pink, inky hands. We're all making something. It's a class effort. 
So come on, Michael, how about a donkey? Please, miss, please, miss, called out Tom Ifley. I can make dinosaurs. Don't be silly, said Miss Grice. Now, Michael, can you make us a donkey? Suppose so, miss, muttered Michael. The whole class buzzed with action, and Michael picked up a piece of plasticine and rolled it into a long, pink, sad sausage. The class worked hard all afternoon, and at one point, the stable began to look like a US cavalry fort, but Miss Grice held firm and insisted on a proper stable. A stable without giraffes, dinosaurs, cannons, circling bombers, or ballerinas. Michael sat at the back of the class, hiding his donkey and dreading the time when you have to put it in the straw with Mary and Jesus and Joseph and the wise men and the shepherds. But of course, eventually, the time came. It's not fair, miss, said Jane Peel. You said we couldn't make up our own animals. I haven't. You have? That's not a donkey. It's more like a funny looking pig. The whole class squeaked like a nest of mice. <coughs> <laughs> it says an all floppy, miss, and it's got a great snout on it and all. Miss Grice went stern. That's enough, Jane. Now, class, tomorrow is the last day of term. Hooray! And instead of having our last lesson, we go down to the church and put the crib in place. During that last afternoon, as Miss Grice read to them the story of the nativity, the snow began to whirl down, down, down out of the leaden sky. The children nudged each other with satisfaction. It really was Christmas now. Michael saw the first flakes fall long before the others because he wasn't listening to the story. He was staring gloomily out of the windows and across the valley to the bleak blue hills. He wished he was up there by himself, far away from the crib and the pig donkey. A little later, the small class huddled together before the crib. It shone out in the spotlight, angled down through the winter-dark church. In the classroom, in a mess and muddle of paper mache, cardboard, glue and paint. It looked a bit shabby, but here it took on a life of its own. The children held a breath as if they expected Mary to start singing softly to the baby. Miss Grice looked at the gazing children and felt glad that it was Christmas too. Only one person wasn't caught up in that lovely moment, Michael. Poor Michael hung back, squinting under lowered lids at the pig donkey. He could see nothing else. He could always hear the grunt and bray at the same time. The hateful, loathsome, foolish thing. Miss Grice wanted the children who lived furthest away to start home early before the snow got any worse. So she ushered the children down the nave of the shadowy church. Michael heard the big door handle turn and the door closed on its own echo. <laughs> Michael, who had hidden behind the pillar, was now alone. He held his breath. He could hear his heart bumping in the grave silence. He stared at the crib and felt as if the angels in the church were looking down on his every move, on his every thought. But he did step forward to the crib and put out a hand to where the Holy Family nestled in the straw. When he pulled the hand back, in it nestled the donkey pig. Michael was just about to make for the door when it opened and in came the vicar and Miss Grice. They were laughing together and the vicar was saying that he thought he deserved a sneak preview, especially since it was his idea to make the crib in the first place. They're all good figures, said Miss Grice, but my favourite is... Well, where, where, where is it? I'm, I'm sure Michael brought it in. It, in fact, I know he did, but where on earth? She sounded so upset that Michael stepped forward like a condemned man being summoned from his cell. Then he heard himself speak and his voice echoed through the church. I've got it, I've got it, and it's no good, it's no good, I hate it. 
The vicar held out his hand, and Michael unwillingly gave him the donkey. Well, said the vicar, this is the finest, the finest donkey, said Miss Grice out the side of her mouth. Yes, the finest donkey I've seen in years. So full of life. Michael, you know the one I always feel sorry for? I feel sorry for Joseph. I always did do, even as a little boy. He must have felt an utter failure having to bring Mary into a wretched stable to have a child. A broken down old stable. I don't expect it was as posh as this one. Still, the great thing to remember is, he did his best. Michael looked down at his shoes. Miss Grice put the donkey back into the straw. Ah, that's better, she said. Ah, yes, I think it looks quite good, mused the vicar. It looks just right in the straw. Donkeys do, don't they? As Michael stood with his parents and friends on Christmas morning, he couldn't help looking at the crib, although he made up his mind not to. As he did so, a funny feeling of happiness came over him. It was the most peculiar donkey, all right, long, lop-eared, and, as Jane Peel had said, with a great big lumpy snout. Donkeys shouldn't look like that. And neither should they look as if they're smiling. Hey, I enjoyed that. Finished. Oh, let's have a look. <laughs> hey, it's very nice, isn't it? It is very nice. I've done a good job with that, haven't I? Yeah. Hey? There's something missing. It needs something right at the top. Oh, can I do it? No, you're far too heavy. Oh. I tell you what, go and see if you can find a star. A star? Yeah, we'll put a okay. star up at the top. Now, let's take another look at carol singing. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Star. Star. Yes, that'll do. That'll do fine, that. Hey. Wait a minute. I've got it, Paul. Look. Here you are. Oh, that'll do nicely. Good. Right, put it on the top of the tree. I'll hold the ladder for you. Right. <laughs> hey, that's very nice, isn't it? Jeez, it's a pity your name's on it, though. Why? I wish we get to the top of the tree one day. Oh. Now, there's only one more thing we need to make the traditional Christmas. What's that? Well, mistletoe. Mistletoe? Yes, it goes right back to the Druids. Oh, when we finish with it, you mean? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. There's plenty of it down the hall. Go and fetch it. I'll go and get yeah. some. And right. be careful, it doesn't grow on trees, you know. Oh, right. right. While he's away, let's go over to our cookery expert, Simon Lovell. Well, the cooking can come in a moment, but meanwhile, I've got a bit of a problem. I've been given this brilliant present from Barry. A real magic dice. It's really nice of him, but I've opened it before Christmas Day, and I've lost the wrapping paper to sneak it back under the tree. However, hopefully we'll try and do a bit of magic, as it is a magic dice. We'll open up the dice, take out a little box that's inside it. Close it up, take the inside box, open that up, and put the dice that was on the outside into the inside, and close the whole lot up. Now, that's what I call a magic dice. However, my problems still aren't over. Barry's paper was this really nice Christmas Chinesey pattern stuff. So, I need one last bit of magic to get me out of trouble. Lift off the top, and there we have it, ready to go back under the tree. Christmas, Chinese-wrapped magic dice. Well, that's certainly got me out of trouble. Now, the cooking. I'm going to make the guys a great Christmas cake. For this, I do need a couple of volunteers. And here they are, <laughs> the McChuckle Brothers. <laughs> nice to see you again. Christmas cooking. Christmas cooking, yep, crumble cooking. This is our little mini oven, if you'd like to hold on to that magic oven. 
first thing we need for a Christmas cake is, of course, some flour. Oh, I you like to add, add, add the flour for? Eat it. I think that's just about enough flour. Next, of course, we need a couple of eggs. Oh, eggs again. There's one. There's... That, that's fine. Yeah. Another egg there you can. That's good. And <laughs> this is going to be a great cake. Finally, we need some milk. Some milk. Can. No, for the cake. Oh, for the cake. Can. For the cake. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. That's plenty. Oh, that's plenty. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> What do you think of it so far? It's not bad, is it? But to complete the cake, of course, we do need to cook it, so we'll stick on the oven lid. The oven. It's quite hot, Ken. It's cooking? Hopefully, with a little bit of Christmas chuckle vision magic, we'll end up with our Christmas cake, especially. Season's greetings. That's our Christmas cake. Now, back to the studio. Thanks, Simon. That looks delicious. I can hardly... Wait to taste it. Taste what? Well, the cake. Oh, the Christmas cake. That reminds me. Did you remember to order the turkey? Yes, I said, turkey, don't you touch that. And it took no notice of me at all. I bet you don't even know that a turkey doesn't come from turkey. Of course I do. Right, where's it come from? The butchers. The, not the butchers. It does. My mum gets one every year. No, it comes from America. The Pilgrim Fathers used to catch them when they went there to settle. Oh, were they wild? Well, they weren't very pleased about it, I'll tell you. Oh. Come on, let's go back to the tree. Right. Barry! Hey, Barry, what? just take a look at that tree and tell me what's missing. Er, uh, the other prezzy. No, not the prezzy. What do you usually get on a Christmas tree? Christmas squirrels. Apart from that... Um... Well, lights. Lights? Yes, pretty lights. Oh, yes. There's nothing like it on Boxing Day to sit back in your favourite chair, full of food and with a good book, and seeing the pretty lights. Green, yellow, red... Red and yellow, back to green. Very nice. They are, aren't they? Yeah. You go and see if you can find them. OK. Hey, do you know why they call it Boxing Day? Not really, no. It's when everybody fights over their prezzies. Go and get the lights. All oh, right. And don't keep going on about your presents. Hey, I've got the lights, look. Right, put them on the tree, I'll go and turn them on, and you can tell me if they're working or not. OK, I'll put them on the light. Right. Right, tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. Right. Now they're working, now they're not. Now they're working. Now they're not. Now they're working. Now they're not. Now they're working. Now they're not. What are you talking about? They keep going on and off. There must be a loose connection. No, they're supposed to do that. They're flashing lights. Yeah, but these are on when they should be off. Oh. Let's have a look. OK. Oh. See? Oh, heck. I know. Oh. We'll have to leave them like that. I still think there's something missing, though. What? Oh, all right. You wait here. Let's have another quick look and see what the carol singers are doing. Great. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Glad tidings we bring to you and your king. We wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> hey. Here we are. Great. <laughs> hey. Hey, is this for me? Yeah, you didn't really think I'd forgotten you, did you? No. no. It's very big. It is very big, yes. Yeah. Well, I thought of all the things that you'd done for me over the last 12 months. Oh. Then I thought, oh, well, it's Christmas. Buy him a present anyway. Oh. <laughs> And now for one of the really great traditional Christmas events, the opening of the Prezi! Yay! No, 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 you can't open it yet. Not until Christmas Day. Oh. Well, that's all we've got time for this week, so have a nice Christmas. Just like we're going to have. Yes. We'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. Hey, you think I could stay up and see Father Christmas this year? Oh, no, there's a film on the telly. Well, I'll wipe it off later. Oh, that's all right, then. Okay. Hey, I'll tell you what you can do. What? You can have a piece of this Christmas cake that Simon Lovell baked for us. Oh, lovely. Isn't it lovely, that? Look, what it's amazing and everything. Look, yeah. Yeah.